so honored and delighted to be here with you in Las Vegas to talk about um, an issue that I think is a, a big challenge and also opportunity, not only within the financial services industry, but across every sector. And that is going forward in this age of digital, in this age of automation, what will be the role of the bankers and the loan officers and the financial advisors that many of our banks employ? What is the role that they play in this age of mobile banking and automation? And that is uh, the focus of my talk, the age of the trusted advisor. So to begin with, we all know this. Every single one of us in this room, we know almost 90% of millennials have their phones with them at every waking and sleeping moment. But we also know that this is no longer a millennial behavior. This has become mainstream. Lots of people have their phones with them and are constantly connected. We know that last year, social surpassed the internet, um, surpassed email and internet browsing as the top online and mobile activity. So we know this. We also know that on average, Americans spend six hours a day no longer watching TV, but actually constantly connected on social, mobile, digital, constantly tapping, constantly scrolling. So we know this, and yet, for those of us who have bankers, and are not pure play direct banks, we have left our bankers behind. And this is a, a huge issue. So what's happened is when we have this digital conversation, in fact, the two Forum X speakers who are coming on after me, they're gonna be talking about direct banking. So no people, so direct to consumer. What we've forgotten to do is talk about how do we take the existing bankers and branches we already have and help digitize them. Because it's great to focus on the left side of the circle, which is you know, your mobile banking app, robo-advisors, any type of direct-to-consumer play. But if we do the left side without doing the right side, two things are happening. First, the bankers are frustrated because with all these regulations, they can't do really basic things like text their customers back when their customer texts them with a request. The other issue, though, is that it's a poor customer experience. Because if you're telling your customers that you're so technologically forward and that they can install your mobile banking app, but then a few minutes later when they're using their same device and trying to text their, their business banker and they don't hear anything back because you haven't empowered your banker, that's an inconsistent customer experience. And so that's one side of the picture. And, and I know that uh, there's a speaker this week from Simple. And so this is the level of, of customer experience and digital interaction that our consumers have come to expect. And of course, there is this, this consumer, customer experience aspect. But the other side of the equation that we also have to think about as we assess what is the role of people in our organization, what is the role of the banker in our organization, is we have to start thinking about the big data automation side. And what's happened is that as more interactions have moved online, on mobile, on social, on digital, of course we have all of this data to analyze, and machine learning combined with big data has resulted in an ability to automate a lot more tasks, and even entire classes of jobs. Um, and of course, it's not just in financial services, it's not just um, the ATM replacing more bank tellers, it's not just robo-advice firms replacing financial advisors, but you go to these factories that used to employ thousands of people, and now you, they employ one or two, and the rest of the jobs, the rest of the tasks are being performed by machine learning enabled uh, robots. And of course, in, in California, in Silicon Valley, where I come from, up and down the highway all the time, we see self-driving cars, the technology that's out there, and we think about what this will mean to the millions of Americans who are employed either as taxi drivers or these days Uber and Lyft drivers or long distance truck drivers. There are these big questions facing society, facing every industry. Even at the airport, you know, we see there's a, this is a holographic projection of, of an agent. We used to employ all these gate agents who would check us in. Now most of us use our phones or at most if we go to the counter, we're, we're dealing with a kiosk, not with a person. In financial services, the question, especially in, even in investment advice, which for decades was such a, a high-touch, person-to-person type of business, everyone's wondering, will the wealth fronts and betterments and these other robo-advice websites, will they 
cause financial advisors to go the way of travel agents 20 years ago? That is the question. And my, my, what I posit to you is that unless we do something, unless we retool our advisors and our bankers and our mortgage loan officers, then these bankers will become obsolete. So no wonder, amidst all of this, all, all this automation, all of these changes in consumer expectations and in the customer journey, no wonder today's bankers feel frustrated because they're still working the same old ways. All of our digital effort, all of our digital budget, all of our digital teams have focused, for the most part, solely on the left side of the circle, which is direct to consumer. We haven't invested in what the desktop looks like for the banker. We haven't invested in making them more productive and them more digitally connected across all of these different channels. And so in many of our organizations, our bankers are obsolete. They're either you know, defined as someone who either A, spends their time doing things that software algorithms can do better, faster, or more effectively, and or B, they're not on the digital channels that their, their customers accept, expect them to be. And it doesn't matter if it's a business customer, it doesn't matter if it's a retail customer, it doesn't matter if it's on the high end, you know, large bank or large businesses and high net worth consumers, or on the mass side. It doesn't matter. Across the board, bankers are facing this issue of either they're already obsolete or they're rapidly becoming obsolete. And yet, and yet I think that our industry, when it comes to dealing with finances, when it comes to dealing with money, when it comes to saving for and planning for big goals. It could be goals for businesses to do M&A or to have enough financing to stay in business between um, collections. It could be personal dreams around buying your first home. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a new homeowner myself. Or saving to send your kids to college. These are, these are really big decisions. My, my thesis is that actually this industry is different than in the travel industry. And that if we do the right thing, we can actually deliver to customers what they want, which is they want a trusted advisor relationship, in addition to a great digital experience. It's not either or, it's really and. And so the way that we, we should, I mean, the way that I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this is, look, what does it mean to digitize my people? What does it mean to make them digitally empowered? Well, I think we really have to start with the customer. And we have to walk through the journey that the customer goes through. And it starts, of course, this is you know, your classic marketing funnel or customer journey, however you want to look at it. It starts with you know, discovery. These days, most of the time, bankers, financial advisors, loan officers are still discovered through a referral. So that's really important. But of course, the nature of referrals has completely changed in the age of social media. Uh, but the rest of the time, Discovery, which used to happen from just foot traffic, people stumbling upon a branch or walking by, um, increasingly that's gone digital. Now they stumble across your branch on Facebook, or they stumble across um, your banker through Twitter, as you heard from Brian this morning. But the very interesting thing is after what happens after Discovery. There's a new set of steps that didn't used to take place in the pre-Google era. After someone discovers a banker, for, a business banker, for example, they could discover that person through referral or they could discover that person from Twitter or even in, uh, through foot traffic. The very first thing that most prospects today do is they Google that banker. And again, it's not just in financial services. When someone gets a referral to a surgeon, for example, the first thing that they do is Google the surgeon. So we, we do the or same for a restaurant, right? Before we go to the restaurant, we Google the restaurant. So this, all, this is just universal behavior. And when they search for that business banker, or that financial advisor, well, what do they expect to find? Certainly, they don't expect to find zero search results. When that happens, they'll typically move on to the number two or number three or number four person. They expect to find that individual, not just the overall bank, but actually that individual banker on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and depending on the type of relationship manager, sometimes they expect to find a website for that person because they want to know, you know from, from the, the confluence of the, those different digital presences, who is this person? Can I trust Susan? How long has she been a business banker? Does she work with other small business owners like me? Where did she go to school? 
Does she have her credentials and qualifications to be able for me to entrust all of my money with her? These are the types of questions that we all ask. The same goes for our customers. And then from there, you know, step two is these customers will then reach out. And of course, when they reach out, like any of us, they expect an immediate response. And just like when a customer walks into a branch and you want to either serve them right away or at least set the expectation that they, they're going to wait X number of minutes and be taken care of, we need to do the same thing on digital. You know, when a banker receives an inquiry, it could be a, twi a tweet, it could be a LinkedIn message. They have to be there compliantly and responsive. And then from there, there's this new expectation around these regular touch points between relationship manager and customer. And we talk, we've talked quite a bit at this conference already about how financial services, unlike other industries, our customers actually appreciate the content that we have. But it's also interesting to look at when you dissect content that's delivered from an institution versus when it comes from someone's relationship manager, of course the latter performs much better because people want to hear from people. They don't want to hear from an, a marketing automation machine. So how do we put a human face on these really important messages that we're delivering to the client? And then it's not just financial touch points, it's also these personal moments of, of truth where you can connect with someone, congratulate them on their baby, congratulate them on getting married, and just, again, to build trust between the, the banker and the customer. And it, it all comes full circle, like I said, through referrals, which increasingly are happening digitally rather than offline. So the, the net of this is, Customers want to engage on all of the channels. It's not that um, versus millennials want one and non-millennials. Everybody wants everything. And so we have to be there. And while we're investing in digital direct-to-consumer, we have to invest in parallel in our core infrastructure, in our core businesses. And yet, we know that the current digital options for bankers are, you know, one or, one or a combination of these three. They're either non-existent, so they either don't have a website with accurate store hours, it's not mobile optimized, or it's dated, um, so it's, it's, it's not mobile optimized, and if you, you try to pull up um, the advisor's webpage or the banker's web, webpage, you actually get an error message on your mobile device. I know uh, we work with some of you where that's actually been the case. Um, or it's siloed. At best, you give bankers these tools, but they feel overwhelmed because they have to go to one place to manage their Twitter account. They have to go to a different system. They have to log into LinkedIn, and they have to do another login into Facebook. And then they have a different system to update their website. And then, oh, yeah, they have another system to run email marketing. And, oh, yes, and then there's their, their, their text messaging. There's no, it's disjointed. So any efforts that you do do, you know, based on our experience, I would highly recommend that you try to integrate, give it one place, because bankers are busy, and of course we want to make it as easy for them as possible, um, not, not the least of which because they're also, many of them may not be tech savvy. And so the opportunity is for us to connect and empower all of our people on the channels that are expected by clients, to use the big data across all of the channels and take them out of silos to make them much more predictive and much more powerful Powerful the way that Amazon.com recommendations are powerful because they're tapping into the big data of your behavior on the site. We know today customers have all of the power. This is the reality that we all live in. It's, as consumers, the reality that I think all of us enjoy. Um, and the, the implication of that is that we have to take our bankers, all of our people that we have, and we have to make them trusted advisors because only trusted advisors will survive. If you're a transactional salesperson, if you're an order taker, you will go the way of the travel agent. You will be replaced by a mobile banking app or a direct-to-consumer app. Only those bankers who can use technology to free their time to literally add the human touch and be trusted experts in their field, only they will survive. And, the, and as, as, as the leaders of these firms, it's on us to help empower them, not only with technology, but with the culture change and with the training and the overall uh, methodology to be able to, to leverage these technologies. In order to survive, we have to, we have to think about both sides of the circle, because together, they constitute the customer experience. 
and the exception is if you if you're a direct only bank, right? Of course, then you don't have you don't have any legacy um, bankers or branches to deal with. But if you do, then short of getting rid of all of them, which then you would you would no longer be playing to your core advantage. Um, we have to go through the exercise of making them relevant uh, um, to, to help keep them in business. Interestingly, some of the data, if you look at the, the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics from the US government, you can see that um, there's, they actually ranked different job functions and the likelihood of being automated over the next 20 years. And so this was from, last, uh, from 2015. And there's something that you can start to see, these recurring themes of the jobs at the bottom which are highly repetitive. These are tr you know, good paying white collar jobs, highly repetitive, um, but very prone to automation versus the jobs on the top, which are at very low risk of being automated. Um, jobs like clergy, being an athletic trainer or coach, being a, a psychotherapist. These jobs either literally or figuratively incorporate the human touch. And that's, that, as we think about the role of, of human workers, including our branch bankers, we really have to think about how do we empower them to have that human touch, both when they're in person, but how do they convey that human touch digitally? Through texts, through social media posts, through social media messages, those light touches that build trust, build rapport, build the reservoir of trust over time with their clients and with their prospects. Um, of course, this is just the beginning. Um, we know that in the next 24 months, this, our planet will add more computing power than it did in the sum total of previous history. I mean, this is just going to hit us like a truck, I think, as a society. Um, but at the same time, I also firmly believe that um, the, this quote from an early 20th century writer, Albert Hubbard, and at, at the time, he was actually writing about the Industrial Revolution. So the 1 to 50 ratio today might be you know, 1 to 5,000, but he said, one machine can do the work of 50 ordinary men, 50 ordinary bankers, but no machine can do the work of one extraordinary um, man or woman. I take some creative license there. Um, and, and I believe that. So we, it's our job. It's on us. We have to make our bankers extraordinary um, because this is the future of technology. It's both customer experience and also the efficiency automation side. Um, and so thank you so much, and let's be extraordinary together. <laughs>